Lighting and filming an interview in a small space like your home office or a client's home office can be tricky, especially because you are working with limited space. In this video, I'm gonna go over how I light a small office space like this, where my camera placements are gonna be and how I set up my audio. My name is Alex Chung and I'm a filmmaker. I think the thing that I love about filmmaking is being able to tell stories and being able to be so creative in the way that you can piece shots together and it can motivate people to do things and teach people to do things. It's also super fun to play around with camera bodies and different lenses and just working with other people. And that for me is really the essence of why I love filmmaking is because you're able to do so much with so many people. Filmmaking is not just about creating visually stunning images, but it's also about the stories that we are able to tell. And film is something that is just so universal where anybody from any culture in any language can interpret and understand a film in their own way. For me, filmmaking is all about constantly learning and adapting to new challenges and pushing myself as an artist. Something that I saw on Shot Deck recently was this frame from the movie American Animals. I really love the contrast ratios on the subject's face, the tube lights in the background, and these little splashes of accent lights that they used. And I wanted to recreate something similar for my nighttime small office interior shoot. Now the main issue when it comes to working with a smaller environment is where are you going to find the space and put your lights, your camera equipment, your audio, your interviewer, your interviewee, and like maybe a camera operator. My office space is a 10 foot by 10 foot room and I have furniture here like my desk with my computer stuff and my bookshelf behind me and also a gear cabinet in the back and with all these things in here that makes the room even smaller and the physical space that I'm working with is much more limited which means that I'm gonna go into this production knowing that I can't be using huge soft boxes. I cannot be bouncing light into a frame and because we don't have room. So with that in mind, the first thing that I want to do is set up my shot first. Like I wanna see what my shot looks like. And if I like how my frame looks, I'm gonna work my lights, my gear around that frame. So first I'm gonna frame myself up on my A cam so that I'm center framed and slightly below eye level. I'm also putting myself inside of this closet space right here in order to make it a frame within a frame. And after knowing what my frame size it's gonna look like, it's easier to work around it. Next, I know that I want to shoot into the shadow side of my face to give myself and create the most amount of contrast. So that means if my camera is gonna be here and this is how my frame size is gonna look, that means my key light needs to be off to the camera right. And also if I'm going for Rembrandt lighting, I'm angling that key light to be about 30 to 45 degrees away from me. Another bad thing about home office spaces is white walls. Typically your office walls and or your client office walls are white, which makes it super reflective and harder to achieve the contrast ratios that you might want. Cobar Lighting is a new lighting company and I'm using their recently released Bicolor CL220 for this setup. I'm also going to be using their BP90 softbox with the included honeycomb grid to really help control the light spill onto the white walls. You can also see that I'm angling the light so that it's not shooting into the left wall right behind me, but still trying to have some of that light still hitting me. The key light is at 18% intensity and at 5400 Kelvin. For small office spaces like this, this is a really nice bright light and it's perfect for these types of productions. Next, I'm gonna turn on my tube lights in the background and these are RGB lights from Luminate. And they have clips that magnetize to the metal bar in my closet space and I'm angling the light down and trying to keep it off the white walls as much as possible. And I'm setting both of these lights to this teal color. The third light that I'm setting up is this neon sign that I have for my office. And it naturally has this really warm orangey color, which is great for color contrast. And I'm making sure that I have it at the lowest brightness setting so that I don't blow it out. And it's also providing me with some slight fill light. And the last thing that I'm gonna do for lighting is taking this little small rig LED panel light and I have a silicone diffusion cover over it and I'm gonna place it right behind my C stand and my light stand so I can give a little bit of accent light to that corner of the room. One thing I forgot to mention was the use of negative fill and I'm simply using a black piece of fabric that's clamped to the bookshelf off to my right. And that prevents a lot of that light bouncing back into me from that white wall on the right side of my face. And it's getting me closer to the same contrast ratios that I see in the reference 
photo. Next, let's talk about camera placement. The way you position your camera and what we see in frame during an interview can significantly impact the overall feel and connection you have with your subject. For example, in my fake interview where I'm talking about my filmmaking journey, I have various objects like lenses, C stands, light stands, and other filmmaking related, and also things around me that show off my personality like my neon sign and also a guitar in the background even though I'm not the best at it. <laughs> but these are things that help clue the audience in to the subject and what they are and who they are. And this is called mise-en-scene or the arrangement of elements within a frame. And like I said, once you have your wide shot established, it's easy to just place those things around your subject because you already know how the shot is gonna look like. And that makes it also easier to place your B cam. Now my A cam for the wide shot is my Canon C70 with the Sigma 18 to 35 cinema lens. I'm shooting at 23 millimeters T218, C-Log2 and 800 ISO. And my B cam is my Canon EOS R with the Tamron 24 to 70 at the 70 millimeter focal length. I didn't shoot with a log profile on the B cam because I just kind of don't like how log looks on the EOS R. And for that camera, I set it up on the bookshelf about 30 degrees off to the left side of camera A, and it's mounted on a mini little tripod thing, and that is a more eye level shot. Now, audio recording is just as, if not more important for interviews and also just filmmaking in general. Luckily, in a small office space with carpet all around, it's not as echoey or the sound doesn't really reverberate off these walls as much. And if you're working with bigger spaces, you probably want some sort of sound blanket above or around you or below the talent so that it can absorb most of the echo. Now, the first mic that I'm using is the Rode Video Mic Pro Plus, and that mic is attached to a monopod that is mounted on a light stand. The mic is above me, just overhead out of frame, and that is plugged into the Tascam DR40X. And for redundancy, I also have a little lavalier microphone that I'm using gaff tape to stick to the inside of my shirt so that it's hidden away. And that is recording into my Tascam DR10L that I've clipped onto my belt. And before I do any sort of interviewing, I'm going to make sure I slate. And this is my low budget way of slating is by making sure that both hands are visible in A cam and B cam. And then I'm going to clap as loud as I can. And that way in post, you'll see that little spike in the audio waveform and you'll be able to match it up perfectly. And that's it. That's my whole setup for filming interviews in a small office space. Let me know if this type of breakdown is helpful for you guys. I would love any feedback or comments down below. But if you did like this video, please hit that like button. It really helps me understand whether or not this is working and subscribe for more filmmaking breakdowns like this one. Until the next one, my name is Alex Chung and I'll see you later. Bye.